Greetings, class. You have reached the Human K channel. Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi came up with an interesting idea called flow theory that we're going to learn more about today. Flow theory tries to figure out what the best experience is and how people feel when they are fully involved and having fun. It's pretty interesting, so let's get right into it. Csikszentmihalyi's study showed that we don't get pleasure from being calm or stressed out. Instead, we get pleasure from doing intense things that take up all of our attention. The quality of the experience and our own desire both contribute to this flow state, which is when we are having the best experience possible. It means that your mind and body are in the best possible state, which includes your thoughts, body, and feelings. It's interesting that flow happens more often at work than in free time. Csikszentmihalyi found nine important aspects of flow that help us understand this state and what makes it possible. Let's look at each one in turn. First of all, we are in the flow when the challenges of the action and our skills are in balance. The job should be hard enough to keep us interested, but not so hard that we can't do it. It's important to find that sweet spot. The second thing that helps flow is when we combine our behaviors and our awareness. We put all of our attention on the task at hand and make sure that our actions and thoughts are in sync, which lets us concentrate well and do a good job. Next, flow has clear goals and a sense of where it's going. We know what to do next, and each step helps us get closer to our goal. We keep going when we reach smaller goals along the way. Flow also means getting immediate and clear feedback. Real-time knowledge about how we're doing lets us make changes and track our progress without needing help from outside. For flow to happen, you have to focus on the job at hand. We limit distractions and focus all of our attention on the task at hand. Thoughts and impressions that don't matter are filtered out, so we can stay very focused. When people are in a flow state, they feel like they can handle the demands of the task. We are deeply involved and not worried about failing or other things outside of ourselves. This feeling of being in charge comes easily, without any effort on your part. Another interesting thing about flow is that it makes us less aware of ourselves. We are so focused on the activity that we don't think much about how we look or how others see us. All of our thoughts are focused on the task at hand. Flow can change how you feel about time. When we're doing things that make us feel in the flow, time may seem to go by quickly, and we may lose track of it. When you're not in a flow state, on the other hand, time may feel slow and less important. Flow can make you feel like time doesn't matter. Lastly, being in flow is a satisfying and enjoyable experience in and of itself. It's called an autotelic experience, which means that the action itself is the reward. People who are in the flow are self-motivated and driven by a strong sense of purpose and curiosity. The action becomes its own source of happiness and fulfillment. Flow states have been extensively studied in the context of artistic activities, particularly in domains such as painting, music, dance, and poetry. Flow states are important for creative tasks like music, where they improve creativity, performance, and overall engagement. High amounts of flow are linked to high-quality musical compositions and a strong feeling of being drawn in. For accurate execution during a show, you need to be very focused and in the moment. Flow makes it easier to express yourself, use your mind, take risks, and try out new musical ideas. Musicians often talk about flow as an ecstatic state in which music moves naturally and in harmony and the body and mind are deeply connected. Flow is important for learning music and can help you feel better emotionally. Music requires a lot of complex thinking, moving, and expressing. And musicians need to be able to learn techniques and pieces of music. Flow can be felt at different levels, with live shows being the best way to feel it. Flow concepts have been used in music education to track and control how people learn music. Planning tasks that are at the same level of difficulty as the student's skills, setting clear goals, and giving positive feedback are all important ways to promote flow in music education. Researchers are looking into flow in dance because it is structured, requires learning skills, has goals, and has ways to get input. Professional dancers practice and focus a lot to get into the flow, and they gain confidence through training in difficult situations. Dance is a creative art form that stirs up a lot of different feelings, but if you get too into it, you can lose track of yourself and time. 
Dancers said that they felt good when they were in flow and that it was a positive experience for them. In professional dance, things like music, knowing the choreography, pre-performance practices, costumes, and social settings can help or hurt the flow. Understanding these parts and how they work together can help you get the most out of your experiences and acts, boosting your enjoyment, confidence, and ability to express yourself artistically on stage. Researchers have looked at many different parts of flow in creative writing, such as how it starts, how it feels to be in control, and how it varies from person to person. The flow is different for each writer because they all have their own tastes and ways of doing things. Some writers like limits, while others have to deal with them when they are rewriting. Successful writers work around problems and use techniques to get into a flow state and stay in charge of both their external and internal environments. Rituals and routines are used to help people pay more attention to the writing job. Setting up a routine and doing certain things, like eating breakfast or working out, can help writers get started on their work. For flow to happen, you need a good plan and a long stretch of uninterrupted time. Different writers have different best times to write. For some, the best time to write is in the morning, while others find that writing at night brings them closer to flow. To stay focused and get into flow, you need a quiet place to work and as few interruptions as possible. Anxiety is a common thing that gets in the way of writing flow. To get past writer's block, try writing whatever comes to mind, getting up earlier, writing every day for at least 15 minutes, and thinking about your mental, physical, and emotional states. High school students also use specific methods to get into flow, such as making goals, focusing on the interesting parts of the work, and controlling their emotions. Writers can improve their writing and get past problems that might get in the way of their creativity if they know their own preferences, take care of their external and internal environments, and create routines and practices that help them get into the flow. Understanding these parts of flow can help us reach a state where we are fully engaged and performing at our best in many areas of our lives. It's interesting to see how flow can be felt in different areas, like sports, the arts, and even schoolwork. So, as we continue through this course, let's remember the idea of flow and how we can use its power to make our own experiences and accomplishments better. Flow can really be a life-changing state that brings us joy, satisfaction, and our best work. The talk for today is over. I want you all to learn more about flow theory and how it can be used. Feel free to talk about your ideas and thoughts when we meet again. Enjoy your day!